John, thank you so much for joining us here at Fun Forum International. As ever at this conference, we're hearing some really lively discussion and, and that continued this morning with your China panel. What did you think about what came out of that panel and, and what are your thoughts? Well, I thought, I thought it was very interesting to hear uh, one of the panelists who spent a lifetime investing in Asia talk about finally beginning to see a real resurgence of Asia. I've been talking for quite some time about the concern that America first really means not just America alone, but America withdrawing, and that China is more than anxious and ready to sort of step into the breach of global leadership, and we can see that with the commitment now, One Belt, One Road, the investments in Africa and other, other places. So that's a real dynamic we have to be aware of. And a hugely growing middle class in Asia too, so the economic outlook there is, is exciting for investors. Very, I, you know, I say that all the time. I, when I speak, I always close with, are things as bad as they appear? Because sometimes it feels like the world's becoming unhinged in this uh, you know, social media world. But in point of fact, for the first time ever, the middle class is the largest global demographic and these are people who are going to want to buy the things that we create and uh, consume the services that we provide. Great opportunity for investors. So what do those investors need to be doing now? There was uh, talk this morning about having local knowledge and, and being in those markets for real. Well, that's always been our approach at Capital Group. It, uh, we have 450 analysts and portfolio managers around the world looking at companies from the ground, uh, ground level up. And I think you want to you, you want to be looking at the way businesses are being managed, their ability to handle disruption, because let's face it, we are in a disruptive era, uh, and whether they are thinking long term uh, and in a sustainable sense, not so much are they doing the right thing environmentally, but it, it may well be that, but from a sustainable standpoint, are they making decisions and moving their business in a direction that is going to allow that business to prosper given the massively different global trends and dynamics that we see today? Uh, I think that's, that's where you find these opportunities. Do you think the industry are embracing those changes enough? Because, you know, this is a very traditional industry that's been very successful for a long time. It's easy to rest on your laurels in that position. But a lot of the panels here at this conference are addressing the fact that these companies really need to embrace what's happening in terms of change. I, well, I think that's right. And I think that kind of hard to rest on. There's no, uh, the founder of our firm, uh, uh, Mr. Lovelace, said there's nothing that wilts faster than laurels rested on. And uh, I think we are in such a transparent world, such a rapidly moving world, a world where information just goes like that. And uh, you know, if you're not nimble and moving forward, uh, you're going to be left behind, no question about it. And one of those moves is going to be looking east more for, for Europe and the US. Oh, no, I, I think no question about that. Uh, it doesn't mean that Europe and the US will be irrelevant. It just simply means there's a whole lot of opportunities there. But I also think from a mindset, we've got to get out of this where is a company domiciled mindset. We've got to be looking more at where does it do business. There may be American companies that as a practical matter are Asian companies in terms of their re where their revenues are generated. And there may be European companies that are as a practical matter US companies or, uh, or Asian or South American companies in terms of where their revenues are generated. And that's a much more important thing to look at than simply where they're domiciled. It's interesting talking about that idea of that sense of globalization with so much sort of nationalism going on geopolitically though too, isn't it? It's kind of ironic and you know, I mean one reason I think the nationalists didn't do quite as well as people were predicting in the European parliamentary elections is is nationalism isn't about let's work together and, and push an agenda. It's like we're pulling back here, we're pulling back here, we're pulling back here. But you're right, the nationalism uh, or the trend towards nationalist populism is, I think, in part a reaction to the changes that globalization is bringing about. Not even so much the economic changes as the cultural changes. As people feel that their way of life is changing, they want to kind of grab out and hold on to that. And, um, and, and, and sadly, that's not the direction that, that we should be going. What's interesting about the United States, for instance, and the nationalism we've experienced there with the election of Trump and America first and all that, the places where his comments about immigration and all are the most salient are the places that have no immigrants. California, you know, 
We don't care. We, we love immigrants. We're very diverse. We understand that's great for the economy and, and for our lifestyle. And so consequently, uh, places that have, have sort of um, grasped onto globalization and embraced it uh, are, are, are much less afraid of it than places that have yet it's to do that. It's kind of the fear of the unknown for those that yeah. don't already exist in I that think society. I think it's a very fair way of putting it. And perhaps that's why there's been a sort of fairly fearful view of China, you know, the, and what they're doing. Because, there, you know, there are elements that concern people about China's society and, and their human rights record. You know, should companies be asking more questions and, and forcing change in that way there before investing or is, can it only be done through investment? Well, I, I'll tell you, I mean, what you have to worry about if you're a company wanting to invest in China or do business in China, and you see the human rights violation, what does that say about rule of law? I mean, what does that say about if uh, all of a sudden the government turns and, and starts uh, appropriating your assets or starts requiring you to do A, B, C, or D vis-a-vis -vis, uh, your employees, uh, what recourse and recompense will you have? So. In fact, the, the human rights uh, record of China does have a relevance to business uh, because it plays into the whole concept of rule of law, which fundamentally, I think, has been one of the foundational aspects of this tremendous global growth and prosperity we've experienced since the end of the Second World War. So with that in mind, international companies you know, really need to do their homework. They need to build those relationships in those geographies to make sure that they're not caught out. Yeah, I think that's right. And I think, uh, and by the way, you know, a lot of, I think the way Donald Trump does things creates a negative reaction. But the truth is, his pushing hard on China to get them to step away from forced technology transfers to get them to comply more with more or have that comply at all with WTO rules and regulations that has bipartisan support in the United States. So those structural changes, we need to hold their feet to the fire on that as well to help uh, Western companies uh, have the opportunity to both build supply chains that are going to work and uh, access that consumer class that we've been talking about. If somebody was sitting in the audience today listening to your panel, what do you think you would like them to take away from it? What would be the key thing you'd hope to have imparted, if you like? Well, I think to uh, uh, the key thing would be to look and think globally, not get so caught up on domicile, and, uh, and not get so fundamentally worried about short-term returns, but really to look at what companies are doing long-term to best position themselves to take advantage of these massively, uh, uh, it, it, almost like the tides, moving and unstoppable global trends that we're seeing around the world today. Long-termism will be key in that part of no the world, No question about it. No question Thank about it. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you. It's, it's my pleasure. Absolutely.